In the Gulf Coast area, more than a million people were displaced by Hurricane Katrina. Every state in the Union established a relief operation. Indiana, like so many other states, welcomed refugees. In those days, weeks and months after the storm, thousands of people relocated to Indiana. Some chose to make this their home, and 10 years later, they have lives here. But as Sarah Whitmire reports, their ties to New Orleans remain strong, and their vivid memories of the storm really don't seem to fade with the passage of time. The Johnsons are happy, tossing a football and laughing on a Saturday afternoon. Good job, Kenny. Cody and his wife, Chastity, bought this house in 2012, and they've lived in Indiana for almost a decade now. But still, it's difficult to call this home. It's still like, even I, when I say, oh, I live in Indiana, that sounds funny coming out of my mouth like I live in Indiana. Born and raised in New Orleans, the couple never considered leaving. Bourbon Street, Mardi Gras, spicy Cajun food, and Zydeco music. That was life. That's 2004, right after the birth of my son, and that's the house that we lived in. No one could imagine what was to come. A powerful storm that would separate Chastity from her infant son for months. Growing up my whole life, I, we always was taught New Orleans was below sea level, and we was never going to be able to survive a, um, anything over a Category 3 hurricane. On August 29th, Hurricane Katrina, a powerful Category 5 hurricane, barreled down on the city of New Orleans. I really don't talk about it. I really never talked about it. Um, it is something that you don't want to talk about. So some things I really <laughs> I forgot till just now. You kind of, you know, have a mental block, try to block things out um, in your head. Cody went with his family and the couple's infant son. Chastity got lost in the confusion as folks lined up to find shelter. And as soon as they like happened, we was like, okay, we have to get out. She and a friend siphoned gas out of abandoned cars and made their way to Baton Rouge. She found herself in a makeshift shelter at a high school for a few days, then a more permanent shelter at an old military base for three months. Three months don't sound like a long time, but when you have a, a, a baby, three months is a, is a huge difference. Chastity, Cody, and their infant son reconnected at the shelter. When I had him, he was barely... He was barely trying to learn how to stand up, and when I saw him, he was walking. So, you know, it was just some things that I missed, like his, his first steps or um, I guess like the first word, there were certain things. It was just, it was just crazy. Buses would come by the shelter offering to take people to different states to come live rent-free for a few months while people got back on their feet. Chastity and Cody watched as evacuees boarded buses to Ohio, Kentucky, and then one day... I was laying on a cot, and he was like, Indiana coming, you want to go to Indiana? I was like, let's go to Indiana. And like he would say, I was just ready. I was just ready to, um, you know, just ready to go. So when they showed us the apartment and, you know, we, we could get an apartment and we could get help, I don't think I was thinking of, oh... I get to take a bath. So we, we got on the bus and we left. I didn't know nobody in Indiana. I didn't know nothing about Indiana but Indy 500 and the coach. That's it. That's all I know. But I was just tired of being in that environment. I'm not sure if you could see it, but that is the shelter that we lived in after Katrina. And this is the day that we, was, we, was, we got on a bus to leave to come to Indiana. So we just kind of took a picture with everybody and um, we just, you know, just pretty much we was preparing to leave. I remember calling my daddy. I was like, Daddy, I, you know, I moved to Indiana. Indiana? Where is that? I said, I don't know, Daddy. It was, it's a few states up. Katrina refugees started arriving in Indiana a couple days after the storm. We had chairs lining up all the way up and down the hall of, of folks who needed Red Cross assistance. Ann Gregson says it was like nothing the Red Cross had ever dealt with. Typically, the Red Cross raises money or sends volunteers to a devastated area. But in this case, there were thousands of displaced people who weren't from Indiana, had no connection to Indiana, 
but they needed help. You're walking down the hall or um, outside and you're meeting people from New Orleans or Pascagoula, um, all sorts of, of places. And um, just being empathetic to them and this um, situation and, uh, you know, uh, fleeing their homes and, and needing somebody to uh, be there for them. Hundreds of Indiana residents turned out to help and some refugees started volunteering even as they were handling their own situations. Larcina Hicks and her family had recently evacuated to Indianapolis from New Orleans when she started working at Volunteers of America. You know, we were going through the process of rebuilding and trying to figure out our next steps while I was helping someone else in the same situation. It was a crazy time. But it helped Hicks deal with a hundred different emotions by being around people who were in the same situation. All told, the Indiana Red Cross helped more than 3,000 Katrina refugees. In the majority of cases, it was temporary assistance until people could get back on their feet and figure out what to do next. Today, 10 years after the storm, the Red Cross doesn't know how many New Orleans transplants are still here. But Ann Gregson estimates it's probably just a handful. The Johnsons have a mortgage here now, and Chastity's mom moved up from New Orleans earlier this year. When they retire, they'll likely move south, but probably not back to the Crescent City. Some things have gotten up and some things are up and running. Um, but I don't think that would ever feel like home like it used to. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Sarah Whitmire. <laughs> Chastity and Cody do make it back to visit New Orleans quite a bit. All of Cody's family is still there, and even though Chastity's mom is here, she still has a lot of family there, too. The population in New Orleans is slowly rebounding. Katrina initially decreased it by more than a half. Before the storm, it was more than 490,000. It fell to 230,000 a year later. In 2014, though, the city once again showed up on the list of the nation's most populous cities. It ranked number 50 at just more than 384,000.